I'm Denise with Artist Her Paint Party. You have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just saw so this is a pretty spring bunny and I think that nice lighter, you know, softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. As big or as small as you want. Hey Nisi. Hey Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose and might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose. Hey, you guys! Been thrown out. Right. I'm Denise yeah, really with like Artist and Her Paint Party. may not seem to have a purpose. Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey, Jim, do you hear that echo or is it just I'm me? Denise yeah, with yeah, you need to turn off the, I think where you're watching it. Hey, you we're, we're hearing you watch it. <laughs> you gotta take it off. You gotta turn your speaker off on the computer. I don't know why otherwise, because you're the only one on. You gotta take it off. You gotta turn your speaker off. Well, you guys, I'm the one with the sound issue now. Because you're the only one on. Can you put some headphones on? Well, you guys, I'm the one with the sound issue now. You're the only one on. Dear Lord. Put some headphones on. I've never had this issue before. It was yeah, it was fine before. Can you put headphones on? Give me a sec, guys. Can you guys hear me now, or is it still doing it? No, that's much better. All right. So, hey, sorry about that. I thought we had it down. I'm the one with the technical issue. Okay. All right. Awesome. So you guys, I'm Denise with Artist at Heart, and I am super excited. I have here the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. Yay, Bethany is going to talk to us today. Hi, Bethany. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yep, I can. Great. So I am Bethany. I'm here at the Greater Cleveland Aquarium, and I am the caretaker for our dart frog. So we do have three different color morphs or subspecies, uh, two different species of dart frogs here today. Uh, we have the blue ones and the yellow and blue ones. Those are both the same species, uh, but they're known as the blue dart frog and the Patricia's dying dart frog. Uh, dying as in color, not as in death. Uh, and then we also have our green and black dart frogs. They're a little bit smaller. And those we have actually been breeding and raising here. Uh, so we do have a handful of extra small guys in here uh, that were born and raised here. Dart frogs are native to South American rainforests. At least all three of these species are. And uh, they are brightly colored to help warn off predators that they are distasteful and toxic and will um, not be good to eat. The green and black ones also actually blend into their environment pretty well if they step back into the shadows because rainforests do have a lot of black and green things to hide in and among for themselves. Uh, dart frogs actually get those toxins from their diet. So they eat bugs that eat plants that are toxic and at every stage it concentrates down resulting in extremely toxic tar poison dart frogs the blue ones are actually considered one of the most toxic species but here at the aquarium we feed them pinhead crickets and fruit flies that we raise here so these guys are not actually toxic because they don't have any toxins to concentrate down in their diet uh, so I use toxic and poisonous pretty interchangeably, but I don't use poison and venom interchangeably. 
And the reason for that is that venom is basically when it bites you or it stabs you or it pokes you and that's bad, that is gonna be venom. But if you have to ingest it or touch it to get sick, then that's gonna be poison. Uh, so the lifespan of these guys is about four to six years in the wild and 10 or more years in captivity. So with plenty of food, the right humidity, the right uh, environment, the right lighting conditions, they can actually live a pretty long time. I think the record is actually over 25 years for a single grain and black dart frog. And so I can open it up to questions. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. That's excellent. Wow, that's really interesting. And you know what? I have Campus International here, some of the fourth graders. They're actually going to be visiting you on Friday in person at the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. So we can bring you on Mrs. Holly's fourth grade right, class. Fourth grade. Right, we have a couple questions. Um, can dirt frogs be red and green? Uh, so there are different species that are different colors. Uh, there is one called a strawberry dart frog that is red with green legs. They are smaller than the ones we have here, so we don't keep them because we like to keep relatively the same size cohort. Are all dart, frog, dart frogs poisonous? In the wild, they are all poisonous. Mm -hmm. We got a couple more. Um, uh, can um, dark frogs eat other frogs? So they can, and that's actually one of the reasons that we're trying to keep relatively the same size grouping in here, is because a lot of, like a lot of frogs, Dart frogs aren't too picky about what they eat. If it fits in their mouth, it must be food. About four more questions. Thank you, Ramon. Is that okay? Four more? Yep, so, absolutely. So, if I get bitten by a dart frog, will I die? Say what? If I, got I didn't understand that. By a dart frog and I Start again. Go ahead. If I got bit by a dart frog, will it be like poison in my body? Well, if you got bit by a dart frog that would, and you got sick, that would mean it was venomous. And dart frogs are not venomous. Uh, unfortunately, if you got bit by a dart frog, you were probably touching the dart frog too. So you'd have to be very careful not to get that poison from touching it into you. So it. So are you like, can you touch the dart frog or would yeah, it just these, instantly, yeah, well, could you like touch it or would it just instantly like, are you? yeah. So these dart frogs are not poisonous because they don't have the wild diet and the wild bugs and the wild plants. So these guys I can actually touch uh, and have had to handle a couple of times. In the wild, um, touching a dart frog on its own would mostly not be a problem, as long as you didn't have any cuts or anything on your hands. But if you were to touch the frog and then rub your eyes or lick your finger or anything like that, then it would become a problem. Okay. How large could a dart frog um, get to? So the largest dart frogs are um, about half again as big as these guys. These are some of the larger dart frogs. Um, so they can get a little bit bigger than these, but not a whole lot bigger. They all stay pretty small. Um, my question is, what are the colors of a poison dart frog? So poison dart frogs, every species comes in its own color variation. And so there's red and yellow and purple and blue and green and every color of the rainbow. How small can a dart frog get? 
How small can they get? Well, there are some species that are probably about a half an inch. Uh, and then baby dart frogs can be a lot smaller. Uh, so they hatch as tadpoles, which are pretty tiny. And those tadpoles then grow up into frogs that are maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch long when they start being frogs. So my question is, how does the poison get into the poison dart frogs? So plants in the rainforest make lots of poisons to stop things from eating them. But some of the bugs in the rainforest figured out how to eat those plants anyway and then use those poisons to make themselves poisonous. And then dart frogs figured out how to eat those poisonous bugs and use those poisons to make themselves poisonous. So it's just what they eat and then they can take it out and put it into their skin, basically. If someone hurt the frog, the frog can die. If something hurt the frog, could the frog die? They are pretty sensitive. Um, so just like you, they can heal up from minor injuries. Uh, but because they are so small and so fragile, uh, uh, something that hurts them might hurt be a big problem instead of a little problem. Like if you stubbed your toe, it might break their toe. So they could, but they can also heal up depending on how bad it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are great questions. Should we check with Miss Outreach's Rich's class and see if they have any um, questions? Well, she that, sent no. one in, but if there's more, I'm not sure. You can. She sent one student to me. Oh, okay. Do they want to wave to us and say hi? Sure. Hey, there she is. Um, can I have a just a couple questions? Sure. Sure. So, how is it true that poison dark frogs are the most poisonous amphibian in the world? Yes. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Um, my question is. Don't cut. My question is, how did poison dart frogs? How did the poison dart frogs figure out how to how to make the bugs point? How to eat the bugs poisons without getting poisoned themselves? That is a great question. And that sounds like the sort of thing that we need a professional researcher to answer. So maybe you can grow up and be that researcher. Ask your science teacher. <laughs> right? I have a question. Uh, do, can dark frogs uh, have different poison? Different. I mean, depending on what kind of poison the bugs have eat? Uh, a little bit. Uh, so there are some variations in concentration and the exact chemicals, but they all kind of are in the same family of chemicals. Hey. My question is, do all dart frogs, um, do all dark frogs know how do the are they like braised to um eat the um leaves and poisonous bugs and things like do their parents raise them or they just do it on their own they just do it on their own they're just an animal that eats bugs and they know they're an animal that eats bugs and their bodies just do stuff um, you probably don't know exactly how you turn food into energy, but your body knows how to do it, and it's kind of the same thing for them. Okay. These dark frogs are crazy. Um, my question is, um, 
Can a dart frog have a baby? And if it can, can it have different colors? So dart frogs lay eggs, and those eggs hatch into tadpoles, which grow up into frogs. Uh, so there are some color variations, and everybody's going to have their own spot patterns and everything like that. Um, but for the most part, blue dart frogs make blue dart frogs, green dart frogs make green dart frogs, just across the board, pretty much the same. I, I forgot to say, um, 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 ha, um, ha, um, how, how can these frogs jump? So they are more long jumpers than high jumpers. They really only jump a few inches high, but they can jump pretty far long ways. Yes. Question. Question. I have, uh, thanks, Miss Outrich's class. I have another group, Miss Johnson's kindergarten class. This is uh, from a different local school. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Oh, Miss Johnson, we like your Cleveland Browns jersey. We have to give a shout out to the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Do you? We're I know you. Week, so we are dressed up with our favorite um, team sportswear today. That's excellent. I love it. Do you have any questions? Yes, we do. You want to? Okay. Here's the shot. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Here, scooch down so you can see yourself. Go ahead. Can frogs be pets at your house? Did you ask if I have them at my house? No, I said, can frogs be pets at, at your house? At your house. Well, some people can do that, but they do require a lot of work. So they're not an easy pet to take care of. Oh. Okay. If you want to have pet frogs, you have to have pet flies. Okay, thank you. We also wanted to know how many eggs does one dart frog lay at a time? Uh, for most of them, it's going to be somewhere between four and ten eggs at a time. Does anyone else have any other questions? Me. Okay, go ahead, Alex. Go. Uh, kind of frogs eat. Swim in the water. How do they what? Swim in the water. Well, these frogs don't really do a lot of swimming. They like it to be in a place that there's a lot of moisture in the air. And they might go wading in really shallow pools, but they don't do a lot of swimming. Where is their favorite place to sleep? They're going to sleep in the trees, uh, tucked into a little corner where they're not too visible. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And we have next Miss Connolly's art class. Again, a different school. Hi, Miss Connolly. Hi. Can you hear me? We can hear you great. Do you have a question right. for us? Some of our students have some, we're, we're at Roxborough Middle School in Cleveland Heights. Who has a question? Go ahead, Ferg. Um, is a chemical reaction or some kind of like, what chemicals and are there chemical reactions? Is that the reason for the poison in them? Is it, does it have anything to do with chemical reactions? Thank it you. does, but that is way beyond my pay grade. I don't know the details of that, unfortunately. <laughs> Science teacher. Thank you very <laughs> yes. much. Does anyone else have any a question? Oh, Jeffrey has a question. So my question is, when a frog is, when this type of frog is exposed to a certain and an additional amount of light, does that like reduce the amounts they are able to live? Like you said that they can live in the water about four or five years. If they live in a certain area of the wild, is that is it possible for them to, for that to decrease? I mean, the things that make it increase and decrease are things like predation or droughts or just getting fires, just any sort of environmental thing that is going to shorten their lifespan. It's 
just really hard to live year after year when there's so many things that could go wrong in your world. Thank you very much for these smart questions. And very else, okay, we have we have one more question back here. Double question. Um, so the question that I have is, um, how many eggs does a dart frog lay in a year? In a year? Um, <laughs> that depends on how healthy the dart frog is and how many good spots to lay eggs they can find and how many mates they can find. So I don't know for sure what the average is, um, but they could certainly have several breeding encounters in a year. Thanks, Ms. Connolly and the kids at Cleveland Heights for joining us. Thank you so much. It was so fun. We can't wait to make our frogs. Excellent. Bethany, I have a question for you. Sure. So I was actually like looking up information about uh dart frogs are there really I, i'm dressed like the strawberry dart frog today but are there really rainbow dart frogs i don't know offhand of any species that's truly a rainbow dart frog um, but i do know that they come in basically every color that there is i wanted to make a rainbow dart frog but then i was like oh that's not real that's fake you know you can't believe everything on the internet so i wanted to ask you <laughs> Yeah, so, off the top um, of my head, I can't think of any species that would be a true rainbow frog all on its own. And I have one other question. So I love the habitat that they're living in right now. Can you tell us about that habitat, like the temperature, humidity level? Sure. So these guys are kept at a humidity of actually over 80%. Uh, so I actually had to clean down all of the windows before we started so that you could actually see into the exhibit and see the frogs uh, because it does have some condensation. Temperature wise, they run a little bit warmer than room temperature. Uh, we use Celsius around here, so 25 degrees Celsius, about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, a lot of that is maintained by heating the water. Uh, you can see some water dripping down from there. Uh, we actually have the entire underneath section is warm water, and then it overflows as um, basically a waterfall that we let drip down. That keeps the humidity high, keeps the temperature high, and keeps everything nice and moist for them. All right, this is a silly question, but do you shut the lights off at night when they when it when you guys go home, or do the lights always stay lit in there? So the lights are on a timer. They run from roughly seven thirty a.m. to seven thirty p.m. Okay, and then they sleep. Yep. Oh, that's really interesting. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that wonderful information with us. Are you going to create with us today? I am not. I'm running a little bit behind this morning, but. <laughs> well, thank, I know you guys are opening soon. So again, the kids from campus will see you on Friday. Thank you so much for sharing all that knowledge with us. Wonderful. Well, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks, Bethany. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was awesome. Did you guys love that? I love that. So I'm glad I didn't make a rainbow uh, dart frog, but. That would be cool. Again, so maybe you make a realistic one and maybe you make an imaginary one. Now, I know a lot of you guys that are joining me today are joining live, but you've watched my recording. So here's the thing. I kind of draw fast, but you can't pause the live video. This is going to be recorded. You can watch it any time you want to. You can use any supplies that you have, okay? Pencil, paper, crayons, markers, color pencil, whatever you want to use do it. And again, I'm just going to get you started and then you guys can do your own thing. And uh, Jim Fuse is behind the scenes. He's running the camera and running the technical part, which obviously I'm not great at. So maybe uh, Jim, you could show us some samples of other dart frogs that we could create today. All right. Look at those patterns, designs, shapes, different positions of the frog. Excellent. Ooh, look at all those colors, right? Very cool colors. That's a 
really cool. I love that like gold and orange blue. Very cool. Okay, look at those suctions on the frog. There you go. That's to give you some inspiration and to give you some ideas. Love it. All right, so let's get going. Now, you guys, I want you to draw with a pencil. Like I always say, pencil, grab an eraser. I like to draw with marker on the camera so you can see it better, okay? So now, because we're live, and again, if you guys want to just draw with me later, it's fine. All right, here we go. I'm going to do, that's one of the eyeball sockets. Do, 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 do. I'm going to draw a silly frog first. So this is like a cartoony frog. And if I'm going too fast for you guys, remember, you can replay it and pause it. All right, so there's the basic outline. Let's give him a cute smile. So I kind of thought when she was talking about the dots, like the polka dots and patterns on the frog, it reminded me of our fingerprints, right? So uh, their coloring is similar to their parents, right? But they all have a unique design to their dots or spots. And again, create your environment. Is it on a leaf? Do you have like condensation around it? And you guys can just use like, you could do a sloppy copy and practice. You can use paper. I'm using a sketchbook. This is my actual, I'll show you guys what I'm using. But you guys can use a sketchbook. I'm drawing right now in my mixed media pad. That's what I'm using right now. And that's my cartoony frog. And again, you guys can do it any colors you want. Is it real? Is it imaginary? All right, let's try another one. Okay, so right now when I did this, I did it vertical. You could do yours. So you could do yours portrait style or vertical or horizontal. I'm going to flip this one. I'm going to do the next one horizontal. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, you know what I forgot to ask? And I bet you some of you guys know this. But when she was talking about them eating flies, which I don't I don't really like flies, but oops, you guys can't see it. Is that better? Um, what I thought was interesting is I wonder if their tongue is sticky. You know how like you see in the cartoons when a frog sticks out their tongue and then like it's the flies like stick to it. So you think that their tongue is sticky? You can add texture, a design, you can shade it in. But you guys, you know, I do many sloppy copies. Even before I came on camera, I was practicing, okay? So don't worry if your first time you do it, it doesn't come out right, okay? Do it again. 
And do it again, and do it again, and do it again. Keep practicing. That was great that Bethany was able to answer all those questions. So when we go live with the Greater Cleveland Aquarium, which we've done several times, and we always have to do it before they open because they have lots of visitors and schools, just like you guys are going on Friday, and they open the doors at 10, so they like to go live right before all the visitors get there. So you guys, I'm just using a Sharpie. Again, you can use anything that you want, but I highly recommend you use a pencil. Now look, my frogs are just floating in the air, right? So create your habitat. What's your habitat? Now, I have to tell you, I thought that those tanks would have been warmer. I, I am surprised that they're in the 70s because they're, right, they're um, native to sound like uh Costa Rica and the rainforest. So I would have expected it to be warmer than that for them to survive. It sounds like typical Cleveland weather, 80% humidity and 70s. It's like, you know, kind of like our summer. All right. Again, so create a habitat, right? Maybe, maybe you put out a little sticky tongue and they're like catching a, 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 a fly or fruit fly, a little baby fruit fly. So you guys decide again. Now you could create texture by cross hatching using whatever it is that you're gonna use. I'm actually gonna use, I have, oh my gosh. So you guys, I have like a huge set of markers here. I don't know what you have. Use any colors that you want. Obviously you could tell I was really loving the, the strawberry dart frog. I like the yellow one too. I think that I'll start with blue. And I'm going to do my spots black. But you guys, again, you guys come up with, look at all these colors. Okay, that's what. I have a bunch of markers here. All right, let's see. So I have this blue. And I'm just going to color it in. doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're not going for perfection here. And yours doesn't have to look like mine. So what I like to tell everybody is the way you draw, think about how different it's going to be from mine and from everybody else's, right? So think about your handwriting. Not that it's going to look like your handwriting. It's just going to look different than everybody else's. So when you learn how to write the ABCs, your ABCs did not look like your teachers. Well, it did a little bit, but it looked like yours. And the art is the same way. It looks like yours. And that's what makes us all unique. Wouldn't it be fun to write a story about your dart frog? You could write a story about your dart frog. You could give your dart frog a name. What would be really cute too is if you created like a big giant mural collage with all your friends or even yourself. You can make a bunch of them and cut them out and stick them together.
Now you could even do mixed media, which means maybe part of it is going to be done in marker and part of it's done in color pencil. And maybe part of it is going to be done in crayon or oil pastel. Again, you're the artist, you decide. Maybe you do the whole thing in pencil. All right, there's my blue. I'm gonna try another blue too. And if you don't have a different blue, that's okay. Let's see. Let's see that. They're, the colors are just so beautiful and intense. Let's try this one. It's a little bit lighter. Can you see that? I loved how the colors blended together. If you have watercolor paint and you can mix the colors or you can use, you know, acrylic, whatever you have access to. Hmm. Cause I'm going to do my dots black. Spots. I keep calling them dots, but they're more organic shapes. They're not very geometric. So don't try to make like perfect circles. So when you have a shape that's not geometric, like a circle and an overall is geometric, but these are more like organic shapes. Oops, I forgot to finish coloring that part in. Right here. Now, if you go out of the line, it's okay. You know why? Because you can um, retrace it. So I go out of the line, you guys. I'm not perfect by any means. I just think that art is really relaxing and I just think it's fun. So look, like I went, let me see if I can show you guys real close. Do you see how I went out of the line in the eyeball? But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to retrace it. Watch with the black and cover up where I went out of the line and no one knows. Now I don't outline till the end. Okay. So like now I'm going to do those spots. Is it looking a little bit like the Greater Cleveland Aquarium Dark Frogs? And again, don't forget about the habitat. Maybe you cut out your frog. Maybe you glue it to a piece of green paper. Maybe you color the background green. There. Now what color should I do the other one? What do you guys think? You want me to do, I could do Red, I could do yellow. I think red should, I'm dressed in red. I'm gonna do red. You could even do pinkish, right? It said strawberry, strawberry. Now I also, you guys, all right, so I love those, but since we have so many kids on today, here's another one of my favorites, all right? So I love these, non-toxic. The colors are amazing. They're just thicker. And they smell really good. And I know we have kindergartners watching today. So my kindergartners used to, they smell really good, right? So this is like a strawberry, like our strawberry dart frog. Well, 
I would say they smell good, but they don't taste good. Don't put them in your mouth. But sometimes I would have a kindergartner and they would have their marker all over their lips. And I said, did you put that in your mouth? And they said, no, no. Yet, guess what? They were pretty covered in marker. So don't put these in your mouth. They smell really good. And I always say smell your paper instead of the marker because then you end up with marker all over your nose. But I really like these because they color really pretty also. And they're bigger. They don't have a fine tip, but you can use, it's a chisel tip. So you can use it on its, like angle it for smaller areas. And I went out of the line, but I'll fix it later. I'm not gonna worry about it. How am I gonna fix it? I'm gonna re-outline it with black once I'm done coloring. I thought it was really interesting about the poison and the venom. Did you understand that? When one of the kids, I didn't know this, you guys. All right, I don't know a lot about, well, now I know more about dark frogs, but so venomous means when, when you get bit by something, right? Like a, like a rattlesnake, if you get bit by it, it's venomous and that's how you get the poison. So if you, not that you should touch a rattlesnake, but the touch of a rattlesnake is not what's toxic. It's their venom. Dart frogs, it's touching them. It's in their skin. So their skin is what lets out the toxins or the poison, not the bite. Did you understand that part? Hmm. Let me do this part right too. Maybe I'll use like a lighter right too. Although, she, didn't she say they were red with green legs? Should I make this leg green? I think that might look a little funny. But she did say they were red with green legs. I'm going to do mine all red. Let's do this. I should do that one darker because it's kind of in the background. I'll do it lighter right now. This is the back leg. See how it's overlapping, lapping, so it looks like it's in the background. Do one more. Frog toe. Frog toe. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? All right. So let me see. All right. I don't have a lighter red in that that have all these variants of red. So, again, and I don't expect you guys to have it, but you know what? A different supply. Again, you can try a colored pencil, a crayon. Let's see if this one looks different. Yeah, see, it's a little bit lighter. Maybe you do an orange. Orange and red look good together. And then again, I'll do the spots black. And then I'd outline it last. Ooh. Let's use this one. They're friends, you see that? Maybe they're brother and sister. Maybe they're coming up with a list of, hey, let's go ask the science teacher these questions. You guys had great questions, by the way.
So that again just shows you guys because I googled it, dart frog poison dart frogs, and rainbow dart frog came up, and I was like, oh my god, that's so cool! I want to make one, but I didn't know if it was true or not. So I didn't want to make one knowing that I couldn't find if it was like fictitious or real. Now again, if you guys want to make a pretend poison dart frog that looks like a rainbow, go ahead. But just know that they don't really exist. And I did not know that they were the most poisonous. One of the uh, students asked that question. I'm like, oh, I had no idea. So look, now I'm re-outlining it. So everywhere I went out of the lines, you see everywhere I went out of the lines? Once I outline it, I'm going to cover up all my mistakes. Bye-bye, mistake. No one knows. I'm just telling you guys because we're friends. See that? They just disappear. And look. You just keep doing it till you like it. Art's like anything else. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Okay? Like sports, like shooting baskets, or reading, writing, and arithmetic. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. We're not talking about perfection, right? We're just talking about practice. Building your skills. Okay. I didn't even outline the outside of this one, but you don't have to if you don't want to. It's also fun to add texture. So you could add texture by rubbing it on something that has texture like a leaf outside you could get a leaf outside and actually put it under your paper and rub it and get the texture of the leaf like into the background so i think texture always makes an artwork more interesting or you go on a texture hunt around your house or maybe even around the classroom and do like little texture rubbings and then you can cut it art out and create a collage or again you can create texture on your paper by cross hatching or you know just creating the illusion of texture all right so let's do the bottom real quick again create a habitat or cut them out hey have you guys ever used this is another really cool product. Have you guys ever used solid paint sticks? They're amazing, you guys. Teachers love them. Kids love them. They're not messy. The only thing is they're thick, okay? So like for a big area, look at that. So it's tempera, it's washable, but it's not messy. So these, again, are just really fun to use if you have them. And they take about two minutes to dry. Of course, you can hand paint it with acrylics or tempera, watercolor paint. So see how I'm like creating the texture of grass by not coloring it in solid? So you can see like the lines and stuff, have some white poking through. That gives it like the illusion of some grass. All right, that one I'm gonna leave. You could add the veins to the leaf if you want to. Let's see. 
what else do I have? I have, again, you guys could do a cartoony frog. If you're gonna do a cartoony frog, you can use imaginary colors. Maybe you make a cartoony rainbow frog. Oh, I know what else I wanted to show you guys too. Something else you could do. And I know some of you guys might have to go, but if you guys get, you know, wanna share your artwork in a little bit, oh, you can also, here's another one I did. Okay, you guys can create a collage, again, with your classmates or by yourself. You can create a bunch of little frogs and cut them out and glue them together. All right, so let's say you guys want, do you have colored paper? Okay, one of my favorite, bright colored paper, right? So you guys can create your little dart frog on some colored paper, okay? So the color's already there, but this is just, again, so mixed media means you could try it different ways. So draw it on a piece of colored paper. Practice, of course, first. Don't lose your markers like I just lost. There's my marker. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave my spots or my background the color of the paper, but I want to do my spots and my eyes black. So when you guys are doing uh, your spots, maybe you don't make it too much uh, look like a pattern. Mrs. Holly's class, you're so welcome. I just got a text. Thank you so much. So thanks for joining us. I don't know if anybody is done or wants to share their practice while I'm coloring, but if you guys, I can see a few of you before you go, if anybody wants to wave um, and you'd have to come up to the camera up close and share it. And then, um, but I know that, oh, there we go. Miss Holly's class before they go. Hang on one sec. Let me see if I can. Mr. Jim Fuse, can you um, add some of the kids to the camera? Hold on one sec, guys. All right, let me see if I can do it. All right, there we go. Who we got here? <gasps> Look at it. It looks like a rainbow frog. Awesome, awesome. Oh, it's going. Beautiful. I love it. That's great. All right. Perfect. They did a great job. Oh, look at those colors. All right, guys, wave. Wave bye. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, you guys. That was awesome. How about, let's see if Miss Outreach's class. Do you guys want to share any artwork? <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's great. I love your notebook paper too. Don't do that during class though. <laughs> That's so cute. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, nice. Thanks, Miss Outrich's class. Thank you so much. Hey, Miss Jackson's class. Oh, that's so cute. Wait, hold on. Let me turn your sound on. Oh, I love it. I love the tree. That looks great. 
Nice job, you guys. Oh, wow. Look at those colors. That looks great. Very nice. It's like a pretty pink. Okay. Thank you. We're going to get ready. Thanks. Thank Thanks, Ms. Johnson. Bye, kindergartners. Hold it up. Hold it up. Oh, cute. Bye, you guys. Hey, Emma and Bella. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you, girls? Good. Amazing. Emma, you feeling better? A little bit. Yes. All right. Let's see what you, oh, wow. Look at that shading. Hold it up close. We love, what are you using? Watercolor pencils. Love it. I love how you're shading it. Like it's a pencil, but like you dip it in water and it comes water. That pizza. looks great. Nice. That, awesome. I love how it, sh it's, it looks like you can, have the lights and darks and the different tones. Oh my gosh. And a neon, a neon girl. She is too cute. Oh my gosh. You put lips and eyelashes and lashes. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. I love it. Adorable. Oh, I have those. I got those markers too. Is that what you're using today? Oh yeah. I'm going to use these next. Ooh. I forgot I have these here, but um, I know, is that what you, you use the neon pink in there? Um, I think I used this one. What is it called? It's called six or nine. <laughs> it's it's six either six or, six or nine. Yeah. <laughs> yes, these, these are um, a little more advanced than mm. my Mr. Sketch, right? But the colors are amazing. All right. That's awesome. You girls did a great job. Oh, we have one more fact about frogs. Yes. <laughs> Tell us. So... The tongues aren't always sticky. They just produce mucus before catching a fly or bug or something. Because if they were always sticky, then their mouth would get stuck together. So. Really? So like when they get hungry, they produce mucus? Yep. Yeah. And yeah, when they, they like... it, it just, you know, produces in their mouth and then they go for it. Wow. I did not know that. And I wonder how long their tongue is. I don't know, but in some of those videos, when you see the slow motion videos of frogs catching prey, they're pretty long. Yeah. Yeah, and quick, right? Very. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Well, thanks for sharing. Well, thank you for the field trip, Denise. Oh, we have <laughs> You're, what's that? Yeah, we have. Oh, we have. Yeah, sure. They're withering already. They so. wanted to show you today because they're not sure if they're going to last till Friday. Oh, let's see. Let's see what you carved. There's a, a kitty. Can you see the kitty face on Oh, it? the kitty, yes! He's so cute! And there's another kitty. Aww. Those are great. <laughs> we have a kitty. I spot. love it. Yeah, kitty pumpkins. Remember last year when we did it with the Greater Cleveland Aquarium, we did um, pumpkins and piranhas. Yes, we did. Ooh, yes. So, that was last year. Can you believe it? I already? Jennifer, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I know. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thank you so much. Have a great Bye, day. Bye, guys. You Bye. too. Bye. Oh, all right. Here we go. Hi. Hey, you guys. Are you guys want to come on? I see your light. Hi. All right. Here we go. Hi. 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 How are you? Are you guys Good. Good. Hi. Let's see what you're making. Hi. Hi. How are okay. you? You can hold my phone. This is mine. And you guys are painting today? Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me turn it. Um, 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 I'm, I'm making um, um, my frog have, have markers because they're not as runny as the paint, so it's easier for my for I, I understand. Frog. Come look at mine. Mine. These are the ants trying to get the apple, and the frog is trying to get the ants. And That's there's so a sunset up here with a few more stars than a full moon. 
Wow. So Look at those colors. So I love how you made that little butt. It's so cute. Um, nah, 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 and then here's Raleigh's. Let's see, Raleigh. Oh, look at those little baby dots. Wow, that's so intricate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you move that one marker on top of it so I can see it? <gasps> wow. That is amazing. Look at those little blades of grass. Yeah, you can see what it looks Regan like. has one too. One more color. Oh, look at the little frog with his arms out. He wants to give me a hug, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He's like hugging. It's like the frog is He's hugging. He's pretending to be a plane, Regan said, and this is a gorilla. I love it. Oh, you got a gorilla and a frog. Well, I think your frog is bigger than the gorilla. That's a big frog or a baby gorilla. It's a baby gorilla, I think. It's a baby gorilla. Is it a nice gorilla? Um, I'm going to go ask I think Regan. Yeah. I think so, too. Well, thanks for creating with me today, you guys. Mine's a poisonous frog, so I'm gonna give it a yellow tummy and and rat eyes. Yes, it is a baby. It is a baby. Okay, I'm glad. Thank you very much for creating with us. Have a good day. Have a good day. You too. Bye, guys. Isn't it impressive how cute and different everyone's is, right? There's no right or wrong, you guys. Just think outside the box. Do your own thing. That is what is so amazing about art. And again, if you don't like it, do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. All right. What I wanted to show you guys, too. Here's my little baby frog. Okay. Now, could I cut him out? Of course. Let me... Cut out my little colored frog here. Because then you can put it on a different colored paper. I know it's really interesting, again, to hear about the poison part of the dart frog. So do dart frogs live in Cleveland, Ohio? Well, I guess they do if they're in the aquarium, but in a natural habitat, no. You're not gonna find dart frogs in the metro parks. You're not gonna find dart frogs in your backyard, right? You know, when I was little and I was out in the neighborhood playing, and we had these little baby frogs I would catch. And one of them um, pee peed on my hand. Okay, sorry to be gross. But, and one of the older boys in the neighborhood told me that I was going to get warts on my hand from it and I would have warts forever. Well, of course I cried, but that's not true. So, if you have hold a frog, you're not going to get warts. Okay. And we don't have poisonous frogs in, in Cleveland. Now, or I should have asked the girls in Florida if they have poisonous frogs in Florida. I'm not sure. I know there's poisonous snakes there. But I don't know about frogs. I think frogs are kind of cute. A little slimy. Right? So again, you guys can cut out your frog. And then maybe put it on another piece of paper. Build a habitat. It could even be dimensional, right? You could even make it pop out. So I would color it before I cut it out.
I love that neon pink. I'm going to look for it real quick. So if I use my neon pink on my yellow paper, what do you think, what color do you think I'm going to get? Let's see if this is sticky enough to hold it on here. Uh oh, it looks like he's dancing on the other frog's head. But that's colored paper. Again, it'll look really cool on another colored piece of paper. So if I use my other markers, all right, this is like the Mac Daddy set of um, markers, okay? I would not say this is good for like kindergarten. I would say these are good for, um, you know, probably ages eight and up, just because they're a little bit more intricate, designer friendly. You have a double edge, you have a wide tip and you have a, a fine tip. Okay. So fine tip is good for little details, but I want to try the neon on the yellow and see, I have a feeling it's going to make it look a little bit orange. See, it's not as bright as Bella's. Bella's was like neon pink, but it still looks cool, doesn't it? So that's what I'm telling you guys, experiment. If you don't like it, do it again, do it again, do it again. Try it from different angles, try cutting it out. Do you like that color, the color on there? Oh, let's do this other leg back here. And then maybe I just use a lighter version. So that was pretty bright, but let's try. Let's try, I don't know how this is a, a softer color. I'm gonna see how this turns out on the yellow. like a different value, right? I could leave the spots yellow. I could cut the background out, right? All those different ways you can change it up. Now, I know I had drawn, oh, I think my sketchbook. Let me see my sketchbook. I had done, is this the one it was in? Oh, no. I have a couple of sketchbooks, you guys. Actually, I have a ton of sketchbooks. I have more than a couple. I sketched some out in here too. So again, if you guys, that's why I told you I've made like a hundred different frogs before I did it on here. So you can even do it like a combination. Like this is the cartoony and this is the realistic, right? I'm going to do one more. See if they can stay open for me. I don't want it to fall off. All right. I also have colored pencils. 
so again, you guys use whatever it is that you have. So color pencils are going to be a little bit more sheer. But you saw um, Emma was shading hers in. What color do I want to do? Should we end with red? Strawberry, since I'm dressed for strawberry. Again, you guys, how about this one? I'll do the red dots. So do you see that the colored pencil is a little bit more transparent? So I'm coloring in the same direction and I'm pressing, uh, pressing pretty light. Okay. And you can shade it by going around the edges and pressing a little bit harder. See that? So it's a little bit darker. Color pencils. Love color pencils. All right. The only thing about color pencils is you got to sharpen them. So that's why, you guys, I always have my Mac Daddy sharpener. So. All right. It's got these knobs on it so I can fit different pencils in it. Oh, is it not plugged in? All right. Maybe it's not plugged in. Okay. It's not plugged in. But anyway, I keep one of these and it's got all the different sizes for the pencils. So these, oops, have, uh, and they're really good if I have it plugged in. Sorry, but that's okay. You don't need me to sharpen a pencil. It makes too much noise. All right. And it's, here's a tip for you with color pencils. Try not to drop them including your other pencil. You know why what happens when you drop pencils, especially color pencils, the inside part can break. Did you guys know that? Did you ever like sharpen a pencil and the leg keeps coming out and you sharpen it and the leg keeps coming out? That's because you've probably, or somebody probably dropped it and then inside of it, it breaks. These are really, really good. They don't, that doesn't happen to them, but especially color pencils. So be careful with them. Try not to drop them all over the place. All right. Again, you guys did an awesome job today. Thank you so much for creating with me. I'm Denise. Oh, let me hold this up just so you can find me. Hold on. Oh. Look. I'm Denise with Artist at Heart Paint Party. You guys can find me on Amazon, YouTube, and Facebook. All right. Thanks for creating with me. I'll see you guys again soon.